Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat. Andrew Harrison's not here today. His car doesn't go as far as Mount Edgecombe and uh, he's staying up on the hill at Ashburton. Jokes aside, we wish him a speedy recovery. He's a little unwell and we hope that he gets better soon. But we're out here in the garden at uh, Mount Edgecombe sitting, talking with Pat Shaw. Pat, thank you for your time and uh, just giving up uh, your morning to be with us and uh, just wonderful to be in your presence. Always a pleasure. You touched on Wendy, you know, you've mentioned that you've got two stepchildren, but they, they like your own and you're married to Wendy and, and Wendy is also a lover of horse racing. Yeah, she, she loves horse racing. Um, she's a, she loves a little bit, which I don't. Okay. Um, I've never, I've never, in the old days, yes, uh, before I started training, but Wendy loves a little punt um, and, um, you know, Wendy was my backbone. Uh, she had to give up a lot. Uh, from when I started training in South Africa to when we packed up everything and moved to another country. Uh, she was right behind me and uh, pushed, me, pushed me to the limit. And you know, it's, it's, I always say, uh, without a good woman behind you that gives you that yes. little shove, uh, you're gonna go one pace. The Interesting part about you, you know, uh, everyone's got little, um, what's the word I'm looking for, got little um, faults. Uh, maybe not faults is not the right word, but I suffer a bit from OCD, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are you fussy about your food and you fussy about your clothes? Tell us a bit more about That's that. That's yeah, I think, I, th I think the plainer the food, the better. Yes. I'm, I'm one of those that want to go to French restaurants and, um, I'd love my uh, bunny chow and my ba toasted bacon and egg yes. and my macaroni and cheese and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and my vegetables and, you know. But uh, okay. fussy in the sense it must be pre prepped well, good, clean, fresh food. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. And it's plainer the, plainer the better. And your dress code, I mean, even Tawanda and the team has complimented you on your wonderful dress code and, you know, that's... I that's think I grew up with that with my dad as well. He was, my dad was always a... Always impeccable dresser, and um, his pleat had to be exactly okay, right, and, okay. no, and his shirt had to be completely okay, right. Okay. And I think I grew up with that. Yes. So yeah. I've, I've been the same ever since. They always and say very superstitious with, with my clothing, with racing. Oh yes, okay, okay. okay. Uh, so um, if I had a horse running on a particular day and a particular horse that won the time before, I try to wear the same. Rocket <laughs> man, you'd notice. I think everybody thought I had this only one shirt and one tie, <laughs> um, except for obviously when we went overseas we had, we had a suit and that, um, but uh, in Singapore all these races I wore the same shirt and the same tie, okay. it was just one of those things, you know, I hear about guys, the underpants and the socks <laughs> and whatever, but I was, my shirt and tie and pants had Okay, that, that's so. interesting. And and uh, talking about superstition, I also, me too, I'm a little superstitious. And uh, a friend of mine, the one day came to Durban from Cape Town and we were going to the July. And my vehicle was in for uh, repairs and they g gave me a, a rental car or a hire oh, car, okay. bright green. So I go and fetch him. Uh, that didn't really put me off. I go and fetch him from the hotel and he said to me, what are you doing? I'm not getting in. I said, what are you talking about? There's nothing to get in. He said, if me go to the races in a green car, you've got no chance. I said, well, are you going to walk? Uber and all that wasn't around. Yes, and I yes, said, you're yes. going to walk then? You're going to take a bus? I don't know. But I said, you're being pathetic. Yes. He gets in the car. He says, halfway through, every robot went red. He yeah. said, that's the, that's the river. Red robot, red robot. He said, we're going to do our cash. Green car, red robots, we're done. I said, I'll tell you what I do with you. I said, if we, I took a, a, a big chance. I said, if you do your money, whatever you do, I'll, I'll reply, I'll, I'll give that pot and kettle yeah. because I mean, you're being silly now. And he was a bit of a firer. Yeah. Anyway, we get to the races. Uh, it was a cracking day. He, he wins 180 grand yes. driving back. I said, now 180 no, grand. <laughs> I said, it took us for dinner. I said, 180 grand. You've won in a green car with all the red yeah. robots. Now what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to buy the green car. Yeah. <laughs> so, Funny enough. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know Orman always hated green, uh, but, uh, and few other trainers hated black, and uh, I always thought horses eat green. Yes, they run on the green. They run grass. on the green. So <laughs> that was, I wore more green suits here in South Africa than anybody else. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just one of those things I get to, 
I get to uh, Singapore and Malcolm Thwaites, one of the, one of the greats that uh, when I arrived there. Um, I'll never forget uh, in Mike Mitchell's box. I think I was there the second meeting, and one of his mates arrived, and his wife was wearing a black dress. Well, before she got to the door, he said, "Please, please." If you can go home and change, you can come back. <laughs> you wouldn't allow in because you had a black dress. It was just one of those. So, yeah, no, yeah. It was easy super. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but as far as I was concerned, as long as I had my mane, and funny enough, mine was a black uh, black and white type star and a white shirt. What's so, it? Okay, so it just shows you. And, and talking about yes. Mr. Ferraris, Mr. Ferraris, I was chatting to a trainer just the other day that uh, went to the trainer and his wife and Mr. Ferraris, they went off to the races and the trainer's wife didn't go to the Vol you know all that often and anyway they went off and expected a big day and uh, never had a win i don't think they had a place and on the car on the way back i believe mr ferrara said to the gentleman's wife he said uh, yeah, you know, how did you enjoy the day? And she said, oh, that was a pleasant day, but you know, sadly we never had a winner. And he said, well, make sure it's the last you come with us to the bar. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, anyway. <laughs> um, I-, I want to uh, talk about we were, when we were enjoying our muffins earlier on and uh, chatting, we were having a little laugh about uh, education and, and, and the school of life, etc. You only got a standard eight. Yes. Um, I always wanted to be a lawyer, funny enough. It was, but growing up with my grandfather being a trainer, and then my dad started in trading in in '73. Then I thought, you know what? Um, I sang around the stables while my grandfather was. We stayed, she stayed in the caravan on the stables, and um, obviously then it started to get in my blood. And then when I was 13, I went to my first race meeting with one with one of my dad's partners in the fun fair. My dad was in the part in the fun fair business. There. And uh, we ended up at Scottsville. Okay. I was going to school in Maritzburg with the fun fair. We used to travel all over. And um, we went racing and won a couple of pounds. And I used to study, study racing quite often then because he was very interested in my dad's partner. And um, two weeks later, we ended up at Clearwood and I caught a jackpot. Uh, I'll never forget the last league was it was called um, Fagan, written by Johnny McCready. And um, to cut the long story short, I didn't know I caught the jackpot twice because I couldn't go collect. Okay. But my dad went and collected. And I think it paid something like 810 rand those days. And he gave me my 810 rand. But only about a year later, I found out that it, I caught it twice. <laughs> it was the favourite got scratched. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, the, the, one of my odds got scratched. You're good to, to the, the favourite, yeah. okay. And, um, but that was, and then I was completely hooked. And um, when I went to Dublin in Durban, yeah, I sort of going to Dublin in Durban. I was buying the Duff's turf card before it even hit the shelves. I was, I was waiting. And um, from then on, it was... Race over. Race over. <laughs> the end of Standard 8, uh, I went to Damlin. I ended Standard 8 in Damlin, Durban. I went to Damlin in Joburg. And I was there for about four months, five months. I was just my, my dad had opened the stables. And I'll never forget, I walked out halfway during the day. And I bumped into Roy Curling while walking to the bus stop, the late Roy Curling. And he said, You're yeah, early. You're going home early. I said, no, I've walked out today, your father's going to kill you. <laughs> Mr. Curling, there, he must do it here. He says, come, I'll give you a lift. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> now the army go and shout, because Roy will be a big one. You and Roy and my army were big mates. And that was it. Never went back. Jeez. That's a, that's, a, that's a lovely story. And you talk about your dad and, and when you became assistant. It, that goes back right back to 1973 was when you first, when it all started. Yes, yeah. Uh, my dad, my dad trained for about six, five, 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 six years, but he was never into it. You know, he was never. My dad was the type of guy who was into fun fairs, night clubs, back to fun fairs, back to night. He was one of those guys that it couldn't couldn't keep his focus on one sure, thing. Sure, sure, And sure. Um, one thing he did teach me, uh, I must say, was cleanliness in, in, in a stable and stable management. He was brilliant with that. If anything was out of place, horses never had proper bedding, 
nice thick bedding, I knew about it. You know, that's one thing I can say my dad thought me that way. And ever since through my career, I've always been proud to say that my stables were like my own. And, and we can see your home, pristine, absolutely pristine. You must look up at a wall like this and, and really feel proud. Yeah, it brings back a lot of good memories. Uh, obviously, you know, every, every, every trophy has got its uh, ups and downs to it. And um, But when you look at it and you go back to it, um, very pleasing. There, there's a mixture, and we're going to talk about them. There's a mixture. There's some South African ones. There's some international trophies. But let's go to uh, that side there is, is the Rothmans July, as it was called in those days. And, and that's a special trophy. Yeah, that was, that was obviously every trainer's dream. Uh, I was fortunate enough to win it only after five years of training. Okay. Uh, so after that, I felt a little bit lost. I thought, well, now what? <laughs> <laughs> the small one over there was my very first winner in Singapore. That's why I brought him back. Okay. I think it was my fifth runner and he won a, f I won a feature. Jeez, okay. My first, my first winner. So your first time in Singapore, your fifth runner feature race? Yes, yeah. Jeez. The one just below that, uh, Chris Flyer, uh, tell us about that one. Yeah, that was um, that was Rocket Man. Obviously, everybody knows Rocket yes. Man. Yes. You won't believe he, he actually fractured. I took him out for a steady canter, and Robbie Flair jumped off of him halfway down the straight, and I thought maybe, maybe for a prick or prick something. Or something yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyhow, it ended up a fracture, and from there took him straight to the vets. Vets also thought it was obviously foot. X-rayed him and he had a fracture. And um, he raced with a screw from three old, which I'll show you a photo of. He raced with the screw in his leg uh, <laughs> from a three old. So I'll, I'll tell you, I, I remember, I mean, watching those days of, of Rocket Man and, and every South African just cheering you on. And mm. we actually, colleagues of mine that we do the podcast with had the privilege of meeting Rocket Man. I mean, I've got photographs at home with Rocket Man out at Moor River, yes. Jane Thomas's yeah. place. and. You know, when you go to a horse like that and you, you stroke him and you be with him, it's, it's, you just, it's the most unbelievable feeling unbelievable. to know what he's done. That is gorgeous. What's that all about, that trophy there? That is something special. Which one there? This trophy right here with the... Actually, that's not a trophy, sorry. Okay, okay. That, that was a present from my father. Okay. My, my late dad. Okay. And um, he bought it for me as a present. Um, and obviously... It has to come with my trophy. Yes, of course. With the shoe, but what a magnificent trophy. Very, very wow. unbelievable. That is really something special. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And that was uh, the late Norish Juggles. Okay, the late Norish Juggles yeah, goggles. goggles. Oh, On goodness. my last meeting uh, in Singapore, he rode two winners for me and Byron rode the last one. So sure. I had three winners. Wow, that's Actually, as I, as I yeah. hold them here, you just can't help but feel actually emotional. He handed them to my wife. He handed them to my wife. Sure. Because he won the Rocket Man Stakes on my last, okay. last meeting. Okay, okay, right? Shane, that was a so, that was a tragedy, tragedy. narration. Wow, what a what a wonderful, wonderful man! What a wonderful family! What a good man! What a good, good man, man and what a family! So hey? Keep sure. in touch with China. Very lovely family. Yeah, well, that's that's special. That's very special, and as I said, very emotional. Yeah, that was uh, sure Queen Elizabeth when she did a tour to Singapore. Okay, I was fortunate enough that she toured uh, my stable. Uh, and because uh, she's, as you know, she's she loves racing. And funny enough, we got into a quite long chat. Because she said, as 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 I greet her, she said South African. I said yes. She said, oh, I love South Africa. And then we started talking about when she rode work at Newmarket. Okay. And it ended up in a in a conversation. It wasn't just a greet, which sure. was nice, which has ended up, you know. Sure, absolutely. It was actually a joke. Everybody came to me and said. Uh, what were, you, what were you talking about? I said, no, she wanted my phone. Was... <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances of us seeing Patrick Shaw training again here in South Africa, whether it be Durban, Joburg, Cape Town? Any chance of, of you training yeah, again? Yeah, I've thought about it a few times. Um, maybe putting a small string together or, you know, you say you're going to have a small string, but, but then I thought, you know, I've been watching racing a little bit on and off and, Watching the, and I, I had a 
few shares and a few horses small. Um, but I just don't agree with the handicap in here. When I look back at Singapore, uh, the handicap to me is, you know, handicapping is something that the horse has got to prove. It's sure. Not, it's not for a human to some suck a horse's uh, handicap. Um, and I'm sure Michael de Kock couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I think the late tenant, we know there's a good horse, but we don't know that he's a merit rating 104 at his second start. Like, for instance, Red Chestnut Road when I was on a buy. Him. You know, if I'd bought Red Chestnut Road when I was supposed to buy him, you would have come in at Singapore at 61. He was rated 104, yeah. Sure. So, you know, the difference is horses can go through the division properly if you've got a base, like Singapore had a base, and you build them up. And so what if he wins three or four in a row? The owner's going to be too happy and he's going to be buying another one or two at the sales next year or the next sale. And eventually that's what we got into Singapore to bring in that sort of system. It was all about the owner. And because we went through a rough patch the first three years I was in Singapore also with shortage of horses and owners not buying. And, and I think that was a turning point in, in Singapore. Owners could see that they could get a quick, yes, quick income, and instead of waiting for a year to pay as a baby, as a yearling, and then his horse wins and he gets rated 89 or something, he's got to wait another six, seven months for those to drop to his proper level to win again. Yeah. In the meantime, it's cost him, and he's thinking, is it worth it? Inter so. Interesting that you were saying uh, earlier on that. In Singapore, you know, there's eight, nine time winners and, and they, they go, you know, and here in, in South Africa, there's not many of them running around because in your opinion and in many other opinions, they're being limited by the handicap. Well, also, you, you very seldom see horses win eight, nine, 10, 11 races. I mean, if I go back to just mine alone without even, without any other trainers, um, I could keep horses seven years old win eight, nine races with him. Uh, and they've earned, they've earned a lot of money. The owners are happy. And um, yeah, I see horses was two-time winners rated 104, 106, 108. It just doesn't make sense, you know? So for those horses to get stuck at that, uh, at that position, uh, I, think, I think South Africa should go back to Looking at their handicapping system, the handicapping system they got now is very old English colonial handicapping. I'm not blaming the handicappers, I'm not saying they're wrong or whatever, but think of the owner. Yeah. Think of the owner. Because without the owner, as I said before... It was a great, great similarity. Yeah. Tell us, there's no, there's no, ten, there's no owner, the tent can't go up. The tent doesn't go up without the owner, you understand? I wouldn't be there, the jockeys wouldn't be there, the club wouldn't be there. Sure. They are the backbone of racing. So think of them. Even if the horse goes and wins five in a row, the next there? guy is also, can also win five in yeah. a row or whatever. He'll have his turn. But when, you, when you've got those handicaps fluctuating like that, there's no way that can happen. So that leads me to the question then, what is Pat Shaw doing with his time now? What are you doing with your, with your wonderful life and what's going on? Basically at the moment, uh, like I say, I keep a little bit busy in the morning with Ricardo, sends me the videos, sends me bloods, keeps me a little bit busy. As I say, I my 10 cents worth, whatever. And um, I go for my walk and I have my occasional game of squash. And nice when Michael and them come down here for season, they'll always catch up with uh, Glenn Cotts and Michael. Michael. Uh, those guys always catch up somewhere. They have a few dinners and a few laughs. And that's the moment that's my life. Looking at your surroundings, uh, yeah, yeah I, I tell you, you wouldn't uh, want to go do too much else except enjoy your surrounding and your dog and your family and, and, and your home. So, okay, well, maybe Obviously, you never know. Obviously, you want to travel more often, but uh, uh, we've had the COVID. We used to travel at least twice a year somewhere. Uh, but with the COVID, obviously, that stopped us. 
and like I say, um, the dog also keeps us at home quite, <laughs> quite a bit more than what we should. But other than that, um, you know, being here is, it's wonderful. What prompted the move to Singapore right from the beginning? What, what was it that set you off to Singapore? It was huge because I think I, I practically won everything here, barring the Met, but, but the Met was never... I think I grew up in, a, in, in, in an era where the Met wasn't the July. Okay, yes, yes, so, yeah, I hear what you're you know, I remember the July at, from, grade, from grade school and with my dad in racing and my grandfather in racing and even in school. Um, they used to have raffles July, every July, and we'd all pick a number and whatever was put in X amount and whatever was won, they carved the turkey on the money. But yes. we were all around that little transistor radio or radio listening to the Durban July, and I think, and it was then the Rothmans. And I think that was always the trainers, the pinnacle of every trainer's sure. dream sure. to win the July. And I think after I won the July, it came a little bit too soon, maybe, so... so. Then, the tr to come back, now, you and Wendy have decided to uh, come back home. As you say, you always come back to your roots, you always come back to Africa. But what decided you now to come back to us, to South Africa? I think, I think, you know, in Singapore, I'd, I'd also achieved practically everything that you can. Uh, I'd won three Gold Cups, which, which was the main race in Singapore. Okay, okay. Uh, I've won five internationals and... And eventually you get to a point where you think, you know, getting on, got to enjoy life a little bit. Um, and in Singapore we were racing uh, Friday, Sunday. Okay. So there was never, never, never a weekend. Never, never a full weekend and never a break. Because obviously you had a Saturday, but your Saturday was a work day. A work day. And then another thing is I had to, Ricky, LaGrange was with me for 22 years. Sure. Jackie was with me for, I think, 24 years, uh, my other assistant. So eventually I said to him, you know, I've got to give, I've got to give them a break. Okay. And, and um, I was fortunate enough, I did, I did well enough, and give Ricky and them a break as well. So they took over, they, so, they took over. Yeah, Ricardo took over, and Jackie and Ricardo are still there. And you still to this day keep track with them and oh, touch yes. base? Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, I, get, I get the workouts and okay. I, get, I get the bloods and I go through this weekly just to keep me busy. Sure, sure. So he sends me the workouts and everything on the phone. Teal and Rocket Man are, are two horses. I had that fond memory of Teal. I'd never been to the July in my life before. I took my dear old mother with, and off we went and paid our entrance tickets, went onto the grandstand, and it was jam packed. And, and I remember watching Teal and Mr. Crabius Colors with Johnny G. It was Johnny G. It wasn't, wasn't Mr. Crabius. Was it not Mr. Crabius Colors? No, okay. It was the Garble and Madame Bootis. What were the colors? Just it, was, it was similar to, except he had the diamond. Okay, that's yeah, why I'm down getting down confused. Down okay, down. okay, okay. But I remember that that was my first ever July. And, and, and Dan Boot is the second ever horse. Okay. And a small horse too. Tiny. Tiny? Tiny. I couldn't sell him. Couldn't sell him. They used to call the diminutive, the diminutive teal. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't sell him because I had healed the pot less. I had owned full pot. I had big owners like that and I couldn't sell him. They sure. all looked at me as the, when they went to look at him. And, no, Pat. No, Pat. I think you're trying to handle me. <laughs> and I said, he, he can run. I, I, I already had him for three, four months. Yes, yes. And I said, he's got an action second to him. And uh, the late uh, Adam Sutherland bred him, didn't That's he? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she said, okay, so he was just brilliant, Teal. Um, and Rocket Man, I mean, what was he like to train? We, 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 touched, sorry, we, we touched on, on, on his little injury, what well, his injury that he had, but how was he to train? He was the easiest horse in the world to train. Um, he was actually a mug's horse to train, you know? <laughs> um, funny enough, when he had his first first canter around, um, I actually phoned Ricky, I said, I haven't seen a horse with an action like this in a long, long time. 
Ricky was up at the yard still those days on the working horses on the treadmill. And um, he said, Yes, I said, Yeah, you. I said, Tomorrow morning, come down. Just And funny enough, Robbie got off him. Rob, Robbie rode him from day one. Um, and Robbie got off. He said, Pat, this horse just gives you. He does it so freely. And I said, Funny enough, I just phoned uh, Ricardo and I said to him. And um, he said, He flows. And then obviously, started working him. I gave him his first gallop with a horse that just won a two, uh, two, two out of two. Um, he annihilated him. I thought, you. Then we worked him with a, a five time winner called Blade Lager. Uh, he'd won five. He annihilated him. <laughs> and I thought, my third, my third gallop was a horse called British Navy, who already won nine. Uh, it was very, 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 very good also. And I galloped him with him. He was a thousand meter specialist. And Robbie was sitting with a double handful. Within within 100 meters, he just went, and it was like four lengths. Sure. And I thought, no, this, this is impossible. <laughs> and the more I told people about him, trainers and that I met and from Australia, and I'm saying, oh, this Viscount, everybody's telling me they, they're rubbish. I got one that could run. Listen, you can have it. You can have it. <laughs> have it. And he started $54 the first time he ever ran. <laughs> Even after all those gallops. I never punted him. Fred wasn't a punter. Um, Mark was a bit of punter, a uh, 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 punter, Mark Young. He, had, he listened, he had a couple of ran. And um, funny enough, he, he bumped horse of John Mars, that John Mar had rated the best horse he ever trained in Singapore. First time out. And he told his owner, who was one of the biggest owners, who is the biggest owner in Singapore at the moment, he said, you can have the biggest bet ever on the source sure. of his. And he bumped Rocket Man. Jeez. So, Unfortunately, he ran second, but yeah. Robbie, and then Robbie came back, I must be honest, Robbie said to me, Pat, he said, I was in third. I was in third, yeah. He said, he's special. And that, and that was Rocket Man. Sure. That, uh... Very easy horse to train, did his two laps every morning, did his speed work twice a week, trial, trial one, two. He was, he was very, until he had the fracture, then... And obviously, a lot of people thought he'll never come back. You know, once horses got a screw in, mm, mm, mm. in their fetlocks and cannonball. But I gave him, the vet said give him six months, I gave him nine months of box rest and um, he came back. Came back to win another 13 races. Wow. <laughs> two feature and two grade ones, I mean two international. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, and as I say, to have that privilege of, of meeting Rocket Man uh, up in Moy River uh, was, was, was something very, very special. Yeah, he was a public horse. He, in and around the stable, he was an ordinary horse. But the minute somebody took out a cell phone to take a photo, or mm. if the cameras were there, or like you, he'd he, he automatically just pick himself up and start bouncing. Okay, and, okay. And I don't think really <laughs> saw Rocket Man walk, but... We used to call it the Rocket Man Walk, but that was him. Sure. I also remember in one of your articles that your favorite holiday destination is Mauritius. Is it still Mauritius? Same as mine. I could go there every day of the week. And uh, Pardon? I was buying a place there okay. until, until COVID. Okay, okay. Um, when we went for a 10-day holiday, Johnny was there, okay. and uh, we had just a wonderful time, and, and, you know, he took us around, and we went racing, obviously, and it was just great, but those, going back to those owners and Johnny, mm -hmm. uh, those owners, t I mean, brilliant human beings, and, and supported you, Unbelievable. Uh, no Unbelievable. questions asked. Unbelievable. Till today. Still, still in, 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 in touch with them, and... Once a week, burn it every day. Okay. Uh, Fred once a week. Okay. Comes comes down. Always comes to visit. So. 
and and and, and uh, Pat, once you you know, once relationships and friendships are built like that, they're hard to break. Oh yeah, they really sure. are hard to break. Sure. Johnny G, uh, also salt of the earth, as you say. Salt of the earth. One of the hardest working jockeys I've ever known at that stage, um, and one of the fittest jockeys I've ever known at that stage. You know, Johnny was doing the the 94.7k and playing me squash three times a week. Okay. Squash player, you like your squash? Yeah, yeah, I still like my squash. Um, but he was playing me three times a week. Okay. Plus doing the 94.7, plus the practicing, riding minimum of 12, 15 horses a morning. Jeez. Uh, he was he was super fit. And how great is he still involved? You know, he's with Michael and, and, and the friendship there with Michael and your friendship with Michael as well. And just great to see his name in the race card. He owns a few shares and a few horses and he's loving it. No, 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 no. John, jo Johnny loves it. He's just come back from Singapore. Yeah, he sent me a photo with, with himself sitting in the seat where I always used to sit. Okay. With a cigarette. <laughs> and uh, I see, but uh, I said, don't break the chair. <laughs> because I see he's put on a lot of weight. Put on a few yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that uh, Mark de Kock gives you the nickname The Jaw. How did that? What? What? How did that come about? What's? I think. I think because he gives everyone nicknames. Yes, but uh, <laughs> I think him and I used to wind each other up all the time. Okay. So, okay. So if something was going wrong his side, I'd say to him, "Turn around, let me wipe the yellow streak off, streak off your back," <laughs> <laughs> and that would fire him up. Yes. So, you know, Michael it doesn't take much. <laughs> and um, ever since then, it's the jaw. The jaw, yeah. <laughs> We're going to go and watch a little uh, an, a race. He's your last runner. What, what race are we going to see? It was a it was a normal race. I think it was a normal class three. Uh, it was your last runner? My last runner in Singapore. Yeah. And it was a winner. Well, uh, yeah. Well, my last my last beating, um, I had three winners, sure. um, including the Rocket Main Stakes. It was the first time they ever ran the Rocket Main Stakes. Jeez, how's that? So, and Noresh won an awesome mine. So it was a very emotional. I can imagine. But um, you know, at that stage, I was never giving up as for good. Yes. Uh, Singapore always kept me on as, as I'm not. Do not retire. You gain as a sabbatical. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm on a sabbatical. So it was always maybe I'll go back. You know, always one of those. But um, you know, once once you're out of it for five six months. Slowly, slowly, and they still kept kept me re licensed for okay. another year after that, and then COVID arrived, and then yeah, 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 so. just cool fella. Uh, we, as I said, we got this beautiful view of the golf course here. You said that you you're still able to play a bit of squash, but golf you have to. The lawnmower just came past, so we need to acknowledge that. So that it, it, it was a hell of a noise, but uh, that's the beauty of being out in this lovely, glorious uh, uh, estate. Um, we didn't. Uh, we should have told the guy to do his his, his come by at ten past twelve. You yeah, know, you should, have, <laughs> should have let him know. Yeah. For my sixtieth birthday, they, the turf club did this. Yo, how was that finish? Yo. Uh, Pat, at the races, did you used to shout them home? I used to. Shout them home, yeah, yeah. Used to, yeah. yeah that's his fourth time. That's the international. Sure. Dubai Golden Shaheen, eh? Rocket Man, 
can't stop smiling when you look at something like this. Fourth of this grade one. Sure. Patrick Shaw, well done to Patrick Shaw. Patrick Shaw, the winning trainer, Pat Shaw, and he's done it again. It's Patrick Shaw. I see what you mean. You did used to shout them home. That's what it's all about, Pat Shaw. Myself. That's Robbie, eh? Yeah. Robbie, yeah, Robbie Fred. Jeff. Yeah, very nice, very nice race win. Rocket Man, farewell stakes. Obviously, a good tribute to Rocket Man and myself. And um, a well judged race. Obviously, we knew there's going to be pace. And. Uh, Obviously, the, the barrier did help with uh, the general, and uh, like I said, you know, jump him like uh, like and have him up there, uh, follow the lead, and uh, when you come into the straight, he's fit. I'm not going to keep you, Pat, because the uh, the horse is uh, going to have his winning picture now. But uh, from all of us, well done. Thanks ever so much, Pat Shaw, your winning trainer there with uh, the general. Pat's going to head down now. Uh, to uh, to get the winning photo. We'll chat to Naresh as well. He's got big plans coming up. Naresh, quickly, the source, he's game, he's tough, he's honest. How does it mean to you to uh, win the uh, Farewell, uh, Rocket Man Farewell Stakes? I was very glad and pleased to be in a Farewell or Rocket Man. You know, I used to see him in Africa, his races, and today to be a part of him, just an honor for me, to my family and to the team. You know, they support me and they want a horse for them. And uh, yeah, you only get these horses once in a lifetime. Wow. That was, uh, I mean, I just couldn't stop smiling. I had goosebumps and that is something very special. It was a special day. Um, you know, three days on, 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 three winners on your last day. And especially the Rockwell Farewell Stakes, which gave me a bigger lump in the throat. But, um, <laughs> how, was was that, day. how was that ride from Byron? And the ride, and the ride in the last race from Byron was one of the best I've ever seen. I mean, he actually carried it down. Okay, absolutely, because we're just yeah, watching, yeah, you said... He was, in, gone, he was gone at the 400. I thought, well, they're, they're going to grab him, yeah. giving him more weight. Um, they're going to grab him, but he carried it up. We also saw in that uh, footage, we saw the late Naresh Jagalal, and, and you showed us his goggles, and, and again, what a lovely man and a lovely family, and, and just what a loss to racing. That a gentleman, rode a lot of winners for me in Singapore. Uh, Never scared of work, um, and the most grateful man I've ever known, and humble. We also saw some lovely pictures and some footage there of Wendy. We've just met Wendy. She's come back from doing the chores in town. And uh, as you said earlier on, she uh, has uh, been the backbone of the stable, backbone of your home, and, and just back, your backbone. And she's loved every second of the journey. Every successful man is a successful woman. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's pushing, so. yeah. The weed eater, the tractor followed us just now. Now they've got the weed eater chasing us. But uh, uh, so apologies for the noise with the weed eater, but that's being attended to. Uh, Wendy, she, yeah, you can see she, in, in those photographs, she was just so passionate and still is passionate and so supportive of you. And as you say, that's a, that's a big part of your success. It's a big part. It's a big part of racing. Yeah. Mm. Talking about success and, and Wendy being a big part, you, you've had some good quality owners you've had good owners through your career you've had good horses Bernard Cantor let's start with him and, and elaborate on a few of I the think, others you know I think I've been very fortunate with owners owners like Bernard Fred uh, Communarchus Fred Crabier the late Gavin Funnel they were guys that you know that I can and there's so many of I, I, I just want to think of all of them but especially those guys uh, that have become personal friends through all the years. I mean, Bert and I go back 30, 30 years. Um, I think it was 30 years since I've trained his first winner. Sure. And, you know, uh, we go back and if I don't speak to him every day, there's something wrong. Okay. Every second day. And Fred, once a week, twice a week, and especially when uh, Ferrari beat the, the Mercedes, well, then I, that's... I'm just expecting the phone to ring, and sometimes <laughs> I just let it ring. And um, but Mark Young especially flew over in February to come visit us. So you know, I got I, I've had special people behind me, and I've been fortunate to have guys like that. That when you when I went to the sale, I knew 
I had the support behind me and not one of them ever said pat enough or whatever. If I liked the horse, I bought it. So I was very fortunate that way, very, very fortunate. Yeah, and of course, with, with those top owners came the top horses. And, and, you know, we've touched on Rocket Man, we've touched on Teal, and you've mentioned a few others. But as I said, the list just goes on and on, and, and, and you reflect on and, that. And, 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 and I must say, a lot of those, those owners, I mean, a lot of those horses, uh, you don't go to the sales and buy them. They actually find you. Yes. There's always a way. I felt through my racing career, the tickets and taxes, the Teals, the Rocket Mans, the... Quetches, they find you for some reason. They find you, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, the bliss blesses, the kundalinis, the I can go forever, but yeah. you know, I never went and just picked them at the sales and put my name. Well, I picked, I picked that, I picked that. It's it's very much like I picked a lot of also a lot of good horses in my life, but it's I think you've got to have a lot of luck as well. Yeah, absolutely. Pat, well, all that's left for me to do is just thank you and, 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 you know, you've opened up your home, you and Wendy, and it's just been a privilege and an honor to come and meet you. I mean, we've touched base, we've greeted one another at the races, and, but the first time to come to your home and spend some time and, and really learn a lot about you. And, and we haven't even scratched the surface, really, mm -hmm. but uh, as I said, we, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not a Netflix 10-part series that we're doing, and we certainly could, though, with all the content and your knowledge and your experience. But thank you, and thanks for enlightening us and, and really just being so hospitable and sharing with us your, your, your life journey. And, and we thank you for that and, and, and making South Africa proud and making all the owners proud and setting all those records. And uh, the word from me is, you know, here in, in KwaZulu-Natal and, and I'm sure racing South Africa, uh, you know, come to the races. You're most welcome. We'd love to see you there. And if you're there, you need any help, just give us a shout. You're still well connected with Thanks. Mike and, and with Robbie and everybody. But, you know, don't, we would love to, it would be an honor to have you at a race meeting and, no, and come and see us. I appreciate that very much and um, my last words to the racing clubs is please look after the owner and the horse. Yeah. yeah. They are your two main lists. You know, Absolutely. Without them, there's not gonna be there's not gonna be the Justins, the Michaels, yeah. the Peter Kenamayas, the we we rely on them. Yeah, and absolutely. think of them. Think, think of them. Yeah, think absolutely. Them. No, well, that's it's, that's good advice. That's it's an it. owner's dream to go into number one box, and it's not all about the money all the time. So, I think. That's the parting shot. Them. Yeah, think, absolutely. Think yeah. Now, well, to you and Wendy, thank you for the good advice. Thank you for teaching us and showing us so many beautiful things today. And, and yeah, it's just been fabulous. The whole team and, and, and the cakes and the treats and all that we've enjoyed. Only really been a pleasure. So thank you very much. And I wish you and your family all the very best. Again. You know we will. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's that's uh, to the team as well. And, and that's Pat Shaw and Wendy at their beautiful home in Mount Edgecombe. And wow, if you don't watch this, well, it's, uh, we call it the In the Box Seat podcast, but it's been a bit longer than that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mini mini program. You can call it what you like, but wow, it's every second of it is just is, is worth the watch. Thank you to Pat. Thank you to Wendy. Get well soon, Andrew, to the team, to Wanda and Lino behind the scenes. Uh, it's just been a fabulous, fabulous morning. And as always, you heard it from Pat. We'll see you in the number one box.